All right, hello, right. welcome to yet another video. Right, so disclaimer, before you go ahead and do anything, one, anything in this video, if you undertake it on your own RTX 3090 Founders Edition, it will void your warranty. Anything that includes taking off the backplate can and sometimes will invalidate warranties, so it is highly advised that if you're doing this, you do it under your own risk and you accept the responsibilities that come with it, because I do not accept responsibilities for your device if you do follow this through. That being said, also watch everything from start to finish. Do not go ahead and grab all the stuff and then follow, follow along for the first time. Make sure you watch it all from start to finish and you are you have completely digested the information. But with that said, let's get into today's video on preparing this 3090 here, my personal 3090, to become one of the fastest 3090s on the planet, if a bit by brute force. So first half of this video we're going to be going over something that some of you are probably actually going to be wanting to know which is thermal pad replacement because as i have mentioned in a previous psa thermal pads on 3090s kind of suck in fact thermal pads on pretty much every 30 series at the moment kind of suck and they run way too hot so the way to fix this is with new thermal pads but first off you need to know the thickness is stuff like that Right, for this mod, what I am using are Thermalrite Odyssey 1.5mm 12.5 Watt Meter Kelvin pads. These are really high performance, excellent thermal pads. I use them in my 3090 for months and months and months and months before I eventually moved to water cooling, but and then just because I couldn't be asked to buy more, but that's beside the point. Really good. I highly recommend them for this mod. Now, for the front of it, Really, you shouldn't have to go ahead and follow too much of a guide, but if you actually look on your cooler itself, you will notice there are raised sections which correlate, well, correlate <laughs> and align with, yeah, correlate, yeah, I'm going to call it, yes, this is now a movie from the 2000s, anyway, sections that correlate and line up with parts on the actual PCB itself, which you can go ahead and use to figure out where you need to place your new thermal pads in order to line everything up. Also, if you are replacing all the thermal pads, make sure you double check everything before you seal up your card completely and before you put thermal paste on because it just makes it makes it way easy if you've double checked and triple checked everything before you go ahead and finally seal the card up so in order to do this i do recommend having something to go ahead and mark the plastic that's on these thermal pads with and then you know, peel that plastic off once you're done with it so you can mark up how big you need for each bit and then just simply line it up with either the actual cooler itself or you can go ahead and like with the memory because it works out a bit easier to put it on the memory you can go ahead and put it onto the card itself and then when you sandwich it all together you'll see in a minute that once you have sandwiched it all together it'll press together and line up nicely and then you just go and check if everything is fixed well fitting well enough it's not feeling well enough okay pull up, pull off the pads that don't realign them and if they're too big or too small you just simply make another pad and you forfeit the loss or totally you can cut it in half and use a smaller pad for the other half and that way you can save some of the pad without having to you know completely waste it so here we are we are just going to screw down the cooler and give it a nice hot second so it can actually you know the pressure can settle in onto the pads and that way we can make sure that all the pads are in fact in the right place and of course they're actually making contact see here that if i take the card away yep Contact was good enough, so we're actually now going to apply fill paste to the graphics. Yeah. <laughs> apply fill paste to the GPU so then we can go ahead and sort this out properly. This is going to take a hot minute, so I will also mention that if you are doing this, the previous pads, they're kind of oily. So what you will want to do is basically bathe everything which the pads have previously touched in alcohol because they leave such a messy trace and it's not great for film or contact to have that there. You just want the stuff that is on the current pads. Also, with handling the pads, try to avoid touching the surfaces of them once you've took the protective films off, because they can also have their own oils, which are... Yeah, one, getting oils from your hands and mixing it can ruin some of the performance. It won't make a huge difference, but it's still, you don't want to be doing it. And especially when you've already gone through the effort of cleaning up all the old stuff. Yeah, just don't touch them. Don't touch them. Don't leave any residue on where you're going and putting them. And if there is residue, wipe it off clean with either an alcohol wipe, something like that and then carry on. Okay, so whilst that was going on, as you can see, we are already now reassembling the card, so now we are moving on to the back. Now, with this, 
it gets a bit interesting because the actual memory on this is what's called a flip chip design that means that the actual die of the memory is closer to the board than it is to the top of the package which it's in it's the reason why you want to basically go full ham on the back here and get as many film hats as you can to essentially coat the entire back of back side of the card with film pads to dump into the you know, the back plate. Now, whilst you're doing these, uh, whilst there will be, once this is all done, I'll go ahead and freeze the camera so you can go ahead and see where you need to apply them so you can pause and follow along. <clears throat> Essentially, you want every part where there is components to connect to the back plate. Uh, you can probably put some film pads towards the top of the back plate, but I don't think it'll have too great a contact, so I kind of avoided that area here. Now, as you can see here, I'm going ahead and mark, marking up the memory first, because you know memory is the main one that you want to do, because yeah, that's a that's a relatively easy one. But pretty much every component on the back here, you want to be absolutely coated and be careful where you're putting it, because you need to make sure that you've got good contact on everything, but also that you're not putting on so many pads that it's actually preventing the back plate from making proper contact across the board. Oh. God, I'm getting a bit sore talking about this. <laughs> anyway, so moving towards the bit that's right next to the fan, you can see that there is a clip there, so you need to make sure you don't cover that. Of course, if you are doing this yourself, when you are doing it, make sure that you're not covering up any screw holes or anything that seems to connect to something that is on the back plate itself, because of course that'll cause issues, and then you'll have to trim it, and it's just a whole set of issues, measure twice, cut once, Simple done. Hence the reason why you can see I'm going ahead and measuring every last thing and then cutting it two sizes as I go along rather than just, you know, just doing guesswork. I'm actually going ahead and checking everything because, of course, I want to cover most of this with thermal pads. I'm getting most of the way through now, so we can go ahead and do that little bit there. There's a little bit more in the top right corner that I'm about to go and do. And then that should basically be all the thermal pads done, which means in a good hot second, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the camera, in which case... You lot at home can pause the video if you need to follow along. Just go ahead and use the general layout which I've done. Uh, with the thermal pads themselves, if you are buying the same ones as me, they're, th they're the thermal right, I think thermal right, yeah, thermal right Odyssey, something like that. I'll post the link in the description. Uh, 1.5 millimeter. I bought three packs, which was just enough to also have a little bit spare. And there you go. Here's how you go ahead and do it. Pause the video here if you need to. And we'll be moving on to the second part of this video, which is for me the more interesting part. Okay, and also, in addition, you can get small heat sinks as well as some, well, thermally conductive tape to essentially attach heat sinks to the back of your backplate, like that, to increase the thermal performance. Uh, in my case, that made the thermal performance go from, I think it was 110 degrees, because my memory was hitting well into TDP, to reaching as low as, I think, either 84 or 86 at max, which is not bad at all. You know, in the exact same circumstances, having a well over 25, well, like a 25 degree delta, let's be honest, not bad at all. So what we're doing in this part is we are actually going to be adding shunt resistors. What are shunt resistors and why should you care? Well, if you're a person like me, you know, you like the pursuit of speed. And of course, the pursuit of speed means that you're going to want to overclock your stuff. Now, in order to overclock, you need to have a, st you know, you need to have stability. The problem with that is if you're don't have enough power or it's too hot it's just not going to work out and you will get a stable speed so you have to knock it down back however if you can increase the power and make it run cooler well then you can potentially push it further up until the point is actually the instate the instability point of the die itself and you're not going to get any more than that regardless of how much power you pump into it now the problem with founders editions is they only have 350 watts of power now that's kind of an issue which means you can't push an overclock too high however though there is a way around that now, generally you change the VBIOS, but because you can't change the VBIOS on this, we're going to have to be a bit more drastic doing a hardware mod, which is called, well, resistor stacking slash resistor chain, whichever you want to call them. Essentially, we are adding shunt resistors. So on this diagram here, you can see there are three resistors. There's also three resistors on the back of the board, which we'll be adding additional resistors to. Now, what this does, this actually interferes with the mechanism in which the card measures how much power it's drawing. So if we go ahead and add a, another resistor there to make it equivalent to, instead of a 5 mm ohm resistor, a 4 mm ohm resistor, because the voltage drop won't be as much, the card will think it's actually using less power than it really is. As far as I'm aware, I could be wrong, someone can correct me in the com comments, otherwise 
Anyway, that's the general science of it. Uh, in order to work out how much power you want to go ahead and do if you are doing this, because with Founders Editions only, this is Founders Editions only, you cannot put in a different V BIOS, which means you must replace the resistors if you want increased power limits. Now, in order to do that, you can use a shunt resistor calculator. There is one online. Well, it's not really online. It's a download, which I'll post a link to. Do at your own risk, because obviously <laughs> anything that is including, you know, soldering physically changing the hardware of your board it's it's going to invalidate your warranty as i had mentioned at the start here and you can go ahead and work out how much power you want once we're done this should in theory pull a little over 500 watts so first things first let's go ahead and start getting the resistors on now i have never done surface mount you know surface mount devices whatsoever surface mount components so i am burning myself a bit quite a bit here as well slightly messing up my soldering job but I did come up with a general technique of essentially adding additional solder to each end of each of the resistors which we'll be adding onto and then putting the resistor. So that way we've got something extra which the resistor can go ahead and hang on to whilst we start applying heat, melting that solder. Resist you know, the resistor will go ahead and automatically hopefully snap into place of those two, and then as it dries it'll solidify, keep the resistor in place, and that will be a perfectly stacked resistor. Uh, so stacking is essentially where we take one resistor, which is already there, put solder each end, and then go ahead and add additional resistor on top of it to change the resistance again. Check the calculator, which I should hopefully leave a link in the description, in order to understand what's going on. Now, the problem with this, though, is that with the founder resistance, because you have to change every resistor, <laughs> it also increases the amount of power that it will reduce from the PCIe slot itself. So if you are doing multi-card stuff I don't recommend you do this or at the very least you make sure you have a power you have a motherboard that can supply additional power to those PCIe slots without causing any real issues and you know crashes or just the factor of blowing out the board because obviously this is drawing more power than it's supposed to and it's, it's drawing right on the spec that's the reason why I went with 15 mil ohms because that should make it act like a if we just took off both resistors and put a 4 mil ohm resistor in there and in theory, that means that it should be drawing about 100 watts from the actual socket itself, which is right on the safe limit. I think that is the maximum that a PCIe slot is supposed to be able to give uh, by default. I could be wrong with this. So again, take everything with a grain of salt here. I am not an expert. I am simply a hobbyist who figured they'd go ahead and show off their preparations of a card that will be going through a lot in the near future. Okay, so we've now moved on to the back. I'm going to make a mistake here and try and do this whilst it's at an angle and then figure out this is a bad idea. But you can see where the three resistors on the back are, including the one that's connected to the PCIe slot. And what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to go ahead and pick up that PCB and I'm going to put it on its cooler. So that way we can have a nice flat surface, which is, you know, the huge cooler that will also stop the board from moving around as we try to work on it. You know, by now I can just figure this isn't working. There's got to be a better way to do this. And there is a better way to do it, as we will see in... Have I figured it out? There we go. As I figure out right now. <laughs> Again, like I said, first time doing something like this. My technique is terrible. I'm burning myself all the time. We all make mistakes in the heat of passion. Now, I bet this will surprise you. This actually worked, despite how badly I'm mangling this board right now. As well as mangling my fingers. Anyway, so once you've gone ahead and got done your research, you found the correct resistors for your board, you've gone ahead and checked that you're not going to be drawing 5 million watts you know in general so you're not going to just go ahead and pump so much power through it, it blows up then what you need to do is all of the resistors take your powder cart your card apart follow the diagrams which i put up it's it's a similar job with the 3080s except you'll have to look that up or look that up yourself because i don't have the information for it on hand but i do know that the 3080 founders edition is Pretty much the same and the other cards so anything that is not a founder's edition so any add-in board partner cards i do believe generally speaking you can just put a new v bios on and then once you've done that assuming everything's gone well you should be able to have a much higher power limit and let you go ahead and push your card way hotter That's the reason i say way hotter because whilst you are pushing it fast you are going to be in adding a lot of additional heat to it which is the reason why Whilst this cooler has gone through a lot and I've spent a lot of money to get it nicely prepared, it's not going to be sticking around. A lot of these repairs actually, well, repairs, were mainly just to get it up and running. But anyway, 
that is it for this video. So like the video if you like it, dislike if you dislike it, any thoughts or questions, leave a form of a comment down below. Don't forget to check out my Discord, Patreon, all that good jazz down in the description. And well, this has been the 117 con signing off. It's been a hell of a video. There's a lot more that I wish I'd talk about, and it's my second take. But you know what? That'll do it for now. Have a good day, folks, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Until then, ta -ra.